Are you guys ready? Great. All right. Let's uh, just take a second just to center ourselves, kind of put ourselves, right? we're in God's house right now, just put ourselves in the presence of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Good and gracious God, we thank you for the gift of today. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Alleluia. Lord, we ask you to send down your Holy Spirit upon us today as we just think about and reflect on the incredible, incredible thing you did 2,000 years ago. You rose from the dead. Help us to let that reality, let that reality of your resurrection pierce our hearts and pierce our lives. And so we thank you and we praise you. And we ask you to just be with us today and be with us this week and this month and this year. And we praise you. And in your name we pray, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, great to be with you guys today. I know we've been hanging out and, and playing, but um, it's awesome to be able to get to talk to you about Easter. Um, just because Easter is really, like, the center of our faith. I always think it's unfair you know, Pat was sort of mentioning at the beginning, like Christmas gets all this hubbub. Like we all have all sorts of these like Christmas carols, all sorts of these like hype. People love Christmas, right? You get the Christmas presents. It's a blast. Who's, whose favorite holiday is Christmas? Yeah, yeah, I love it. Whose favorite holiday is Thanksgiving? Yeah, Halloween? Easter? Yeah, okay. You're just raising your hand for everything, Dan. I, I love it. Yeah, whose favorite holiday is Easter? Okay, I love it. But typically we don't think about Easter as like that, that big of a thing. Uh, you know, it doesn't get all the hype that I feel like it kind of deserves because Easter is literally the pinnacle of our faith. St. Paul, who literally wrote half of the New Testament, like 15 out of the 27 books. I could be wrong on that number, but most of the New Testament says that Right, Easter, right? We're celebrating Jesus rising from the dead. And he says in 1 Corinthians, he says, if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. If Easter didn't happen, our whole thing of going to church doesn't matter. Like it's pointless. He says, it, it's stupid if Jesus wasn't risen from the dead. Um, and so, okay, what's, what's the big deal? Because it's easy to be like, all right, Jesus is God. That's amazing. He rose from the dead. That's great. We get to have eternal life. Okay, that's cool. But what does Easter mean for me today? Like, what, what's the big deal? Um, did anybody have a chance to go to the Triduum uh, this time? Yeah, right? Triduum, Good Friday. What are we celebrating? Passion. No, that's Holy Thursday. I like it though. Yeah, yeah, you're good. You're good. But Good Friday, right? Passion. The resurrection doesn't mean anything until we first look at the passion, right? We celebrate on Good Friday. We were leading up to it all throughout Lent, right? It was that time of kind of sadness. We were fasting, abstaining, alms, giving all that stuff, all the prayer, preparing for Jesus dying on the cross. And when you think about that, has, that, has anyone ever seen... Um, the Passion of the Christ. Okay, Eli has. You've seen it, Connor? You've seen it, Kelly? Like, it's intense, right? Like, it is a hard movie. It's, it's a movie just depicting the last moments of Jesus's life. And in that, in that film, we see, like, what's actually happening in the resurrection. Jesus dies on the cross, and he literally faces all of our burden of sin, right? all of the weight of our hatred, of feeling abandoned, feeling lost. Um, he faces like every single agony that you could imagine, any kind of pain that you've experienced, like Jesus faces it there on the cross and it's intense. And he bears all of it, not just because he's a glutton for punishment, but to show that he loves us even then, right? He faces so much hardship He's scourged, he, he's crucified, his friends abandon him, he's betrayed, right? Those feelings or those moments where maybe you feel betrayed or like you feel alone, or maybe you've hurt yourself and you feel like, man, I, 
I got nothing to give. Like you feel empty. Jesus bore all of that for you. But that's the thing is, if we ended on Good Friday, right? Jesus dies. God died for us. We hear that so many times. Okay, God died for us, whatever. But he died so that you know that nothing can separate you from his love. Not the biggest sin can separate you from his love. Not feeling abandoned, feeling alone, not the, the worst thing that you could imagine, like running away from God, cursing his name, murdering someone, like that even couldn't separate you from God's love. All right, that's great. But if it just ended in the death on Good Friday, if Jesus just died, that would be a sad story. I don't know about you guys, I love movies, right? Who loves movies here? Yeah. I grew up watching like tons of Disney films, tons of like those fairy tales. And what's like the key line before you have the final credits that say the end, what's the line right before it for like Disney fairy tales that you always hear? And they lived happily ever after, right? That's what I, I think if we're honest with ourselves, like we want to hear that so often. And they lived happily ever after in our own lives, right? Because we want to believe that those bad things that happen to us, whether it's like we're struggling with a test or this friendship is, is really tough, or maybe I'm struggling with a sin that like I just can't shake, or maybe I'm feeling alone. Like we wanna believe that we'll live happily ever after, that that won't have the final say. Good Friday, right? Jesus faces everything that us as humans could possibly throw at him. All of the hatred, all of the pain, all of the suffering that we could possibly pile onto him. He faces it there on the cross. And if he just died there, it would mean that sin and death and all of those things that pile up would have won, right? It would have been like, all right, I guess there's not a happily ever after. What's, what's the point in all of this? But that's the incredible thing about the resurrection is that those things don't have the final say, right? You see those, those wounds that he has on his, on his hands and his feet, right? Those, those wounds that like we gave him, those don't have the final say. Those don't have the last word. There's a, um, this Sunday, we're gonna hear the gospel. And it's an awesome gospel uh, about doubting Thomas, Thomas the apostle. Do, do you guys know this story? So Thomas, so Jesus has died. It's Sunday. Uh, so Thomas is out getting like groceries, basically, while all of the apostles are hiding uh, in the upper room. They're all scared out of their bejesus, and Jesus appears to them risen. They're like, oh my gosh, Lord, it's, it's you. You're alive. But Thomas wasn't there. So Thomas, right, he comes back and they're like, dude, dude, Thomas, like Jesus, Jesus is alive. I, I can't believe it. And he says, he says, all right, let me pull up so I don't misquote Thomas. He says, unless I see in his hands the prints of the nails and place my finger in the mark of the nails and place my hand in the side, I will not believe. Unless I see those wounds right? Those things that he took on for us. I won't believe it. I won't believe. Like he was so hurt by the fact that his friend, his master, his follower died. He's like, there's no way. Like it's over guys. It, they've won. But then we see eight days later, eight days later, Jesus says, um, Jesus appears and says, Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not be faithless, but believing. And then Thomas comes up with this incredible answer, like, my Lord and my God, right? He sees Jesus' wounds. He says, my Lord and my God. I have this awesome image. I love it from my laptop. But uh, there's this image by uh, the painter Caravaggio. It has like Thomas putting his finger 
in the sight of Christ. It's kind of kind of crazy, but if you look at Thomas's eyes, he's like, what the heck? Like there, he he's like, I can't believe what's happening here. And Jesus is literally guiding his like Thomas's finger into the side. It's kind of kind of gruesome, but Thomas's eyes are wide, right? He's like, I can't believe what I'm experiencing right now. The wounds that Jesus experienced, right, from all of the sin, all of the all of the hatred, all of that stuff from from suffering on the cross, those wounds don't have the last word because they suddenly become not just like a, a sign of all of the pain that Jesus experienced, all the suffering he experienced, but they now become a place where we come to believe. They're, they're glorious. They're like an incredible thing. And so I think about that for our life. You could be like, okay, Seminary Patrick, you're talking about all of this. So what? What does this matter for me right now? We all have wounds in a kind of way. Um, whether or not we're like they're physical wounds, like I cut my arm or broke my wrist, like I, I don't know, riding a bike. Like often they're spiritual wounds, right? We, we feel like we're not good enough. Uh, we feel like we're not smart enough. We, we feel, uh, we struggle with like maybe an addiction or a particular sin, or we're struggling to make friends and we feel like nobody gets us or, or we have a hard time relating with our family right? We, we all carry something. It might not be that big, or it might be something that you feel hopeless about. And you think like, maybe you can't imagine how it could be better. You can't imagine what life will look like to make this, this wound go away. You, you feel like this has the final say. But Jesus died and rose again so that his life, right? That gloriousness, those wounds that he experienced don't have the final say. The things that you guys struggle with, whatever they are, don't have the final say in your life. Jesus wants you to live life and live it to the fullest. That's what he's made you for. He doesn't want you to live life fearing death, fearing these things. He has made you for an eternal life. He's made you to share in his life, to experience his love, even in those wounds that they may become a place that you can know him better. And so this Easter season, it's, it's a time to rejoice. Uh, we hear the phrase, this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. You're gonna hear that all throughout Easter. Um, and just think about that is, this is the day the Lord has made. Lord, bring your life into my life. Bring your, your new life, your resurrected life into those spots in my heart that feel wounded, feel dead, and bring those to life too because I promise you, he wants that for you. So we'll pray in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord Jesus, you are so good. You love us so much. You know those places in our hearts where we, we fear, where maybe, maybe we doubt your goodness, we doubt your ability to overcome them. Lord, we ask you to send your spirit upon us. Help us to trust, to move from doubting to believing like Thomas did. And Lord, we we ask you to bring your, your Easter joy into our hearts and into our lives to know that you have risen and so we can rise with you. Not just when we die, but right now, Lord, we can rise. So we praise you and we thank you We pray all this in your mother's name as we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. He's risen. Hallelujah.